Have you ever wondered what 25 redstoneers would be able to build in just 24 hours? No? Well, neither did I. But then I got invited to Sipover's $10,000 redstone competition. Hey everybody, I'm Rickstone and this is what I came up with. Before the event even started, there were already two main groups forming amongst the contestants. Those who already knew exactly what they were going to build and already had a finished copy of it in another world, and those who hadn't planned anything in advance. I was somewhere in the middle. You see, I was on vacation up until the very day the challenge began, yet I didn't want to be fully unprepared. So I started prototyping and coming up with different ideas. In the end, I decided the only build that would really fit my channel was, of course, a gambling machine. But not just any gambling machine. It would have to be the biggest, most complex and flashiest one I have ever built. And this was my plan. I wanted the machine to consist of three individual gambling machines, combined into one. With the main part being a game similar to blackjack. After betting however many diamond blocks you want, you would then be able to press a raise and a stand button. Unlike traditional blackjack, where you would now draw cards when raising, I instead wanted the machine to start spinning a wheel of fortune to determine how many points should be added to your score. Once that is done, those 1 to 11 points are then visually added to the player's 7 segment display. As with regular blackjack, the goal is to get as close to 21 as you can without overshooting it. So you can either raise again until you're happy with your score, or press the stand button, which freezes your score and allows the computer to play. If you bust or the computer gets an equal or better score than you, his eyes light up and he laughs at you. If you on the other hand get closer to 21 without busting, the third and final gambling machine, Plinko, will start up and determine your payout multiplier. The entire process would of course be accompanied by noteblock sound effects and a constantly looping notebook tune in the background. That was the theory at least. Now I just had to turn all of this into reality, which was easier said than done. With the event just having started, people around me were already building their redstone circuits, while I only just started figuring out the ideal layout for everything. We weren't allowed access to WorldEdit or Lightmatica, so once bigger parts of your machine were placed, you weren't really able to relocate them without losing enormous amounts of time. And in a competition like this, time literally is money. After experimenting a bit with the 7 segment display positions, I then started building the dealer's face. I wanted it to look as scammy and devious as possible, while still not being absolutely terrifying. It was super important for me to build the face as soon as possible as it acted as a sort of centerpiece I could then place the rest of the circuitry around. Next came his upper body, including the layout I had planned for Plinko. I also tried my best to position the lamps for the Wheel of Fortune around his head, but didn't quite like the position just yet. So I tore them down again. I had to go bigger. I pulled out a circle generator, inputted a diameter of 80 blocks and got to work. Then I thought, hey, wouldn't that look cool if the dealer held the scoring displays in his hands? But quickly decided to push that idea towards the end of the competition, just in case I might run out of time. Instead, I focused on dividing the Wheel of Fortune into its 11 different segments, added sticky pistons below the dealer's bottom teeth, and thought about the scoring display position some more, also considering where the player might later stand. After about 3 hours, I finally started working on the redstone. These 7 segment displays were some of the few parts of the machine I was able to prepare beforehand. I know, I know, they're pretty bulky, but my goal wasn't to make everything as compact as possible here. I mostly wanted the displays to feel snappy and to be easy to build. With the displays themselves finished, I now had to add the logic circuits controlling them. Each of the two sides consists of two comparator storage cells. One for the 1's digit and one for the 10's digit. Whenever the 1's digit would reach 10, it instead resets to 0 and carries 1 over to the 10's digit. That way I get an independent signal strength for each digit, which I can then use to compare the player and dealer scores. 
For set comparison, I needed to first make sure that the system can tell whenever the player or computer busts. So I designed a little circuit that cuts off the signal whenever both the 1s and 10s digit are at least 2, or when the 10s digit is at least 3. And by then comparing first the different 10s and then the 1s, the machine now knows who currently has the better score. Next up, I decided to start building the circuitry for the Wheel of Fortune. It works similarly to my Spin the Lights gambling machine, in the sense that it's really just a massive redstone clock that can be interrupted at any time. The dark blue circuit here is connecting all redstone lamps with one another, looping a redstone signal back and forth. And this is when I noticed something. Something incredibly unfortunate. Something that I honestly never noticed before, since I rarely ever work on builds of this scale. Let me show you what I mean. As you can see, everything about the animation looks fine from up close. But watch what happens when I distance myself. Yep, it all gets totally messed up. And there was nothing I could do about it. I wasn't even sure what exactly caused this behavior. If there was something weird going on with my performance optimization mods, if it was a server issue or maybe even a problem with Minecraft itself. Especially with the steep competition I had, it had just gotten a lot more difficult to convince the judges of my build. Either way, I didn't get the chance to properly investigate the problem. Not only because I was short on time, but also because, just as I noticed the issue, the server crashed. I was super disappointed. But I didn't have time to take a break. The server was still down, so I decided to hop into my redstone testing world instead. After all, I still didn't know how exactly I wanted to wire up the Plinko machine. And this is what I came up with. Water flows down from the top, gets redirected on every level by some 50-50 randomizers, and eventually makes its way to one of the four different collection areas. When the server went back up, I then replicated the Plinko machine on the dealer's suit. I did run into some problems at first, but none that a few minutes of simply staring at it weren't able to fix. Even though I was still demotivated, I decided it was best to finally return to the Wheel of Fortune. With the main clock now finished, I only had to add two more circuits to it. The first one being this light blue stopper part. This might once again seem familiar if you've ever taken a look at my Spin the Lights gambling machine, but all it essentially does is to unlock the blue circuit repeaters thus letting the wheel spin, and then after a random amount of time lock them again, stopping the wheel. Depending on where the wheel stops, it then activates a different part of this brown circuit. Let's say it lands on 5. In that case, 5 pulses are sent to the display that's currently active and get added to the score. There were only 4 hours to go. I started working on the player area, including the payment processing, raise button and stand button. Whenever the raise button gets pressed, this purple line activates the wheel of fortune as long as it's not already spinning and the player didn't bust. When you decide to stand, this light grey redstone line then activates this dark grey circuit, which also gets activated when you bust. It simply stops you from raising, freezes your display and activates the dealer's display. Then the dealer starts spinning the wheel. As long as it's his turn and his score is below or equal to 16, he tries to raise. I took this number from the official blackjack dealer rules, but looking back I should have probably used the player score for comparison instead, so that the dealer raises the score as long as it's lower than the players. But hey, it is what it is. It still took me quite a while to fully figure this part out, but I got there eventually. I then noticed that with the way I had wired things up, I definitely needed a reset circuit. So I added another button to the player control panel and made it reset any scores and latches. With less than two hours to go, I was still missing the win and lose detection effects, payment and payout circuits, sound effects and decoration. This was going to be difficult. I quickly added a pulse extender that activates whenever the dealer decides to stand. As soon as it loses power, it then gives out two different signals for when the player wins and loses. I first linked the winning signal to the Plinko machine, which still seemed to work fine, and connected it to the reset circuit. Once I had tested everything, I added the four different payout options. Since I no longer had time to implement a full-on betting system, 
I decided I would instead simply charge one diamond block to play and reward the player 0 to 4 diamond blocks. When an observer, in the diamond pipe for example, detects the water, it outputs 4 pulses to this green redstone line, translating to 4 diamond blocks. Gold instead gives you 2 diamond blocks, iron 1, and red none. Now it was simply a matter of connecting everything to the output dropper and configuring the simple 1 diamond block payment system, which also unlocks the raise and stand buttons. And I even managed to add a few node block sounds. There also needed to be some effect when you lost though. So I quickly wired up the science circuit, which when activated, makes the dealer's eyes flash and retracts his teeth, making it look like he's laughing at the player. I added some final note blocks to the Wheel of Fortune, which unfortunately are too far away from the player to even be heard, and started decorating, with less than 15 minutes left. Aside from the rainbow colored Wheel of Fortune, I also added a little platform for the player to stand on. And with that, time was up. Rackstone, what's up? <laughs> no. That's already like doing? a plus point five. I... Oh, nice. <laughs> well, I'm I'm gonna, gonna, I'm let me explain. This is like one of the sickest second builds. I'm looking forward to Yeah, this, yeah, this does look pretty awesome. Okay, so this is like a mixture of Blackjack together with a Wheel of Fortune and Pachinko. It's like the ultimate gambling machine, I guess. Um, <laughs> Mickey, I'm good, bro. Sick man. <laughs> Think about it, Tilda. Go. Man. I'm ready. All right. So. I'm gonna win. Let's I play. I have crazy luck. No, since this is like huh? blackjack, we can raise and we can stand. So, the goal is to raise. get to 21. I'm raising. Raising, you're raising. Just bro? press Are the raise just... button. <laughs> and now just wait a little bit. As you can see the wheel of fortune is going off. I think the oh, Minecraft yeah, animations yeah, yeah, yeah. are I kind of. I see it. Kind of janky. Oh wait. You get 11? Oh wait, no, it's slow. Ooh, a Keep 1, is that good? Uh, no. It's a 1. Guys. That's the worst thing possible. possible. You said you had luck. Coming back. Coming <laughs> you can just relax. raise again. So as I said, the goal is to get to all 21. In, all in, baby. But okay. don't overshoot. Oh, OK. And then once you're like finished, that. the computer will try its best to, to beat you. Oh, Mickey on. Hit, hit on 17? Uh, I think I'd stand. Like, you can risk no, it. Bro, but... <laughs> bro. Uh, <sighs> we hit on 17. Come on. No way. No! Oh, <laughs> he overshot. Yeah, oh. now the computer will just also try its best. Let's just wait for the computer to finish. Oh, my guy's gonna stand. <laughs> Come on. You hit on 19, are you an idiot? Come on. That takes a little while. 21 or bust. 21 or bust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the computer one. Um, oh. Uh, just reset guy. it. Sometimes you just gotta go all in. Right, let's, let's, let's roll the dice. I'm checking out the redstone in the back real quick. Damn! We thought this was the Ferris wheel at first. <laughs> oh damn, you on 13? Give me, like a, give me like an 8. Give me an 8. Oh, come Bruh. on. Oh. <laughs> okay. This is lost again. Bro, the PC about to take the dub again. Oh my god, he got 20 Great. that time. Oh wow. Well. Would have been very difficult to win that. <laughs> yeah, hold that. Eight. Hold yeah, that. Lick him, bro. Do not swoop in for that button. Yeah, I swear yeah. to God. Now, personally, hit. But... All right, let's see. Come on, computer got bad luck. L computer, L computer. This is like pretty compact too. No, oh wait, is he gonna go for? Oh, my cat's not. I think he's gonna go door, for it. Yeah. Oh. Nine. Okay, you have a shot. You have a shot. Oh, let's go, man! Finally won. Right, I'm, I'm flying it down here, taking it. Oh, look at that! Oh, it's the water that does it. So it's like random while it goes down. Ooh, not bad, Mikyam. You got the gold, bro. And you doubled your 
the diamond. Let's go. <laughs> oh, nice. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, so bad. the gold is double, the diamond is quadruple, iron is like, you get it back, and then when you hit the red one, you actually still lose. So. Oh, imagine getting red. Yep, and yeah. that's pretty much it. <laughs> Alright. Ooh, I'm gonna move back oh. in. That was epic. We're gonna get on to the Neex purse. Oh, that was awesome. Everything had worked out flawlessly during the presentation, and I was just glad that the 24 hour grind had been worth it in the end, whether I won or not. All in all, I'm still super happy with what I came up with in such a short amount of time. Sure, I didn't quite manage to include the note blocks and betting systems I had hoped for, and I'm still disappointed that the spinning animation looks as glitchy as it does, at least for me but many of the other things I planned worked out better than I could have hoped for. If you want to find out how well my gambling machine scored in the competition, go watch Sipover's video. If I'm completely honest though, all the contraptions were absolutely mind-blowing and deserved to win. It was such an honor to participate in an event like this, together with some of the best, most legendary redstoners out there. Definitely also check out all of the other contestants. There are links to all of them in the description. And that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!